Hello, I am Nizha, and today I'm taking you to a journey. I'm really excited about it. My journey that I will speak about today is C3PO. My colleagues Emil and Pete will answer some questions that I have for them. So, the general public knows C3PO as a robot in Star Wars. I assume that you are today not talking about this figure. So, Pete, can you tell me about the abbreviation C3PO stands for and what are the objectives in this project? So, C3PO is a Dutch expression and it means creation of 3D printing for companies. Um, in general, within CAMSE, we try to pick up evolutions and innovations within the conduct, construction industry worldwide. And 3D printing has already shifted design and production within fields such as uh, medicine, transportation, 3D plastic printing. Um, the construction industry uh, has somewhat lagged behind and is an insufficient industry. But even there, digitalization and automation are uh, quickly picked up uh, the speed. So we aim to prepare Belgium construction industry for this inevitable in revolution by bringing it closer to them. So we want to give architects, uh, companies, students uh, a taste of this new technology and offer them this space uh, where they can uh, freely experiment with the new technology of uh, 3D printing. Thank you, Pete. Uh, my next question is for Emil. Uh, what are the benefits and the opportunities of concrete printing? Um, concrete printing has uh, lots of advantages over regular uh, concrete casting. A big advantage is that it doesn't require any formworks. So uh, formworks can quickly take up about 50% of regular costs in construction, concrete construction. Uh, because it's very labor intensive. You have to build up a wooden structure, take it down again. Mm -hmm. So in concrete printing, we only have one movement. We print layers without any formwork, and that's it. So that saves us a lot of time, money, and materials. Uh, the additive manufacturing process itself also saves us a lot of materials because we only mix what is necessary. Uh, furthermore, we... Um, <coughs> We print patterned walls with voids in it, so we don't print solids. We only print what is structurally necessary. So that will save us about 50% materials as well. Um, there's plenty of other benefits we can talk about. Uh, less transportation costs, uh, higher accuracy, fire resistance, and so on. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, Pete, what is the current state of 3D printing today? Um, we have seen a huge explosion worldwide of initiatives uh, over the last uh, 10, 20 years and the phase shift of prototyping to actual commercial applications and implementation in the building industry is taking place right now. So this year, by example, several printing factories are starting up. We have Weber Bmix uh, in the Netherlands, we have X3 in France, we have uh, Basics 3D in Dubai. Uh, and by example, Dubai, it aims to be the leading 3D printing hub uh, worldwide and wants to print 25% uh, of uh, each building in the year 2025-2030. So all these things eh, could accelerate the massive upscaling of this technology also in Belgium. It's the moment now. Um, well, I'm very curious about how much time and labor force we need to set up all this structure. Um, well, this specific structure we have right here, this printer is called a uh, gantry printer. It consists of four steel columns and three steel beams that enable the print head to move within the boundaries of this structure. Um, this structure costs us about four hours to erect, but there's also other types of printers with uh, robotic arms on tracks that can actually just roll off the truck and start printing. So all in all, it's quite a quick setup. As uh, for the printing speed, we print at about 250 millimeters per second and uh, have a layer height of 50 millimeters. So you can do the math, but uh, if we have some more uh, experience and optimize our process, we believe that printing a uh, conventional home should be feasible within one day. That's really impressive, Emil. Uh, so um, 
In Shine, we are focusing on upscaling renovation and making it more efficient. Pete, what can 3D printing mean in this perspective? Within a few weeks, we will start printing a two-story house. And if successful, we are the first in Europe who is printing a two-story house. But we only uh, print the structure of it. And if possible, we're going to print uh, facade panels, maybe roof panels, stairs, the interior. Uh, and we strive towards an integrated design in which all building layers uh, are implemented according to the principles of circularity. So all these components will be detachable and we want to be able to repair, to renew them uh, easily, uh, fast if necessary. And with some creative thinking and different design approach, we see opportunities for 3D printing with renovation and existing structures as well. So the technique is very suited for tailor-made solutions. By example, Brühl Beton in the Netherlands uh, is 3D scanning uh, existing facades of apartment buildings, and they want to 3D printing the concrete, the new concrete uh, facade elements mm -hmm. uh, that fits uh, exactly by the 3D scanning. And that, in combination with new methods of uh, installation, will be a good, maybe a good solution for uh, fast and directly. Um, upgrade a renovation process in those buildings. Certainly. So, uh, my final question is for Emil. In Shine, we aim a bottom-up approach for building professionals to ensure a better and a faster adaptation towards new technology. For which specif specific, I'm sorry, specific target groups is this technology intent? And are there already education programs? Well, um, we believe this technology will have a huge impact on all building actors, on architects, engineers, producers, uh, contractors. Like Pete said, it will take a totally different design approach. So architects and engineers won't have to uh, think in terms of straight beams, columns, solid slabs. They can freely experiment with forms and uh, restrict themselves to what is, what is necessary um, so, for example, they can use more organic forms and integrate acoustics, integrate water buffering, more bended shapes, curved shapes could uh, increase the resistance against earthquakes, for example. So there's plenty of uh, opportunities. And what we can't emphasize enough is that uh, creativity is just the main thing in this. Um, we, we will need to stimulate creativity mainly through education. Uh, the Thomas More University of Applied Sciences mm -hmm. is one of our partners in this, and the students are actually the ones who are printing here. And even now the new school year has started, Thomas More is very keen on following up this project, so I think they really uh, see the importance of this in, within the construction industry. Okay, so we are at the end of the webinar. Thank you, Pete and uh, Emil, for answering my uh, few questions. Um, it was my pleasure to host this webinar and to broadcast live from Camp C. If you have any questions, please send them to the email address you will find at the end of this webinar. And um, I thank you for your time and uh, thank you for watching. Yeah. And if the material is so low, then yeah. it really drops yeah, quite yeah, fast yeah. as well. Right.